AX equals B. That's the simplest possible linear system. It has just one equation and one unknown, X. A and B are just some numbers. So how many solutions does this system have? If you answered one, then you're not quite right. Like all linear system, this one has either zero or one or infinitely many solutions depending on the values of A and B. It doesn't matter that this system almost looks too simple to talk about. It still has either zero or one or infinitely many solutions. So let's see how that could happen. So there are really four different things that could happen. We could have an equation like 5x equals 10. So a equals 5b equals 10. Or we could have 5x equals 0. Or we could have 0x equals 10. Or we could have 0x equals 0. So now let's solve each one of these nearly trivial equations and then see so let's solve each one of these nearly trivial equations, but then more importantly, see how our answers fit in the general framework that we have been developing. So looking at the first equation, of course the solution is x equals two. So this system, this equation, has a unique solution, x equals two. Moving on to the next one, it has a unique solution, x equals zero. So in both of these cases, it's just b over a. This is the case where a is a non-zero number. So they're nearly identical cases. It's just that the right-hand side is a little bit different, but the way you approach solving them is exactly the same. The answer is just B over A, two in this case, zero in this case. Moving on to the third equation, we have to say that there are no solutions because zero times any number would be zero and it's impossible to get 10, so no solutions in this case. Finally, moving on to the last case, we see that any number is a solution because zero times any number is zero so x can be any number so just as we suspected there could be none one or infinitely many solutions now let's see how this fits in our general framework so we can write this equation like this thinking of these as vectors from r1 so let me just do it with one of these and see what's going on from the point of view of null space and column space and so forth. And maybe x should be in its own little bracket. All right, not very beautiful, but it will help in our discussion. So what we have here is columns, in fact, a single column that lives in R1 and is a linearly independent vector in R1. It represents a basis. It spans all of R1. So it's capable of representing all other vectors from R1. So regardless of what's on the right-hand side, it will be in this column space of this linear system, and therefore there will be a solution. Now, because it's a linearly independent column, and the only way a single column could be linearly dependent is if it were the zero column, which is coming up. So because this column is linearly independent, the null space is the trivial null space. Let me write down what it is. It's not empty. It's the trivial null space. In other words, it's the space consisting of a single vector, the zero vector. And once again, the curly brackets indicate that the null space is not so much a vector as it is a set of vectors. It's just that in this case, the set consists of a single vector. Okay, so the null space is trivial, so there is a single solution. So just to review, we have linearly independent columns that span the entire space. So for any right-hand side, there is a unique solution because the null space is the trivial null space. And I could repeat all of the same things for this system as well. Now moving on to this system, what we have is, a uh, well, we don't have to talk about its null space, even though it'll be interesting but just talking about the column space, the column space of this matrix, all you can get out of these columns because it's the zero column, is only zero columns. So if I were to write the column space of this matrix, it would be, you can call it the zero column space. Once again, it consists of a single vector. That's the zero vector. So it's not a very rich column space at all. And the right-hand side 
is not in the column space of this matrix, therefore there are no solutions. So you see we're coming to all of the same conclusions and the point of this second part of the discussion is to just fit what we've learned before or realized about these equations before into our overall framework like I said before. So finally talking about this equation the column space is unchanged it's still this trivial column space but this time we got lucky the right hand side is in the column space of this matrix. All we could get out of these columns is the zero column and lo and behold that's what we have on the right hand side. So there will be a solution. Let's just pick any number that satisfies this equation. Let's say we could say one but even zero works plus the null space. And what's in the null space of the zero column? Well the null space in this case is basically any number which can be written like this. So plus alpha 1. And here we have the general solution and it's actually a little, looks a little bit more complicated for what it's really saying but it can be easily simplified. This is just the zero vector so it can be ignored in a sum adding it to any vector doesn't change anything and combining and bringing alpha inside the vector just gives us this which reads a little bit more readily as any number and it still looks a little funny because even though this is a simple one by one system we're treating everything as vectors. If we just lost the brackets would it still fit? Hopefully we would just write x equals alpha which very readily says any number is the solution. So there you go. In this video we've discussed the most simple possible linear systems and we realize that they too fit in the beautiful general framework that we have been developing.